This is part two of an update that I'm doing together with Orchid Troy Boy's son because I have orchids that he has in his collection. Orchid Ninja Troy Boy's son was very kind enough to send me his list of orchids to show me which we have in common. And for that reason, it's been quite a while that we've seen some orchids, but I will be showing you his growing conditions and then compare them to my conditions as I update you on the orchids that we have in common. I am so excited by this group of orchids kids. <laughs> if you know me and my channel, you can see why. Yes, because they are predominantly Rapiculous Lelias, and all I can say is, Orchid Ninja Troy Boy Son, what's going on? Are we twinsies? <laughs> my brother from another mother. <laughs> I am going to go in alphabetical order, and we're going to start right out of the gate with my Lelia Alvarenguensis. She did bloom for us for the first time in 2022, and it was the cutest, I must say, pink blooms on a very long spike. Do not underestimate the size of the orchid in comparison to the spike she grows, but she skipped 2023, and it would appear she is skipping 2024, because I still do not see signs of a new growth from her, with the exception signs of a new fern from her. I have mine growing in semi-hydroponics, and normally these orchids should be absolutely dry through the winter. So what I'm doing here is every once in a while just misting the surface of the pot, simulating dew. That is all. And they seem to be doing really well. So, Abaranguenses, we're waiting for a new growth. Moving on to the letter B. This is my Lelia Briagheri, Orchid Ninja Troy Boy's son. She's doing really well, hoping for some blooms in 2024 because we've got two new growths coming. Lovely jubbly. She has settled in super duper well, and of all the Rapiculous Lelias that I have, about 33 in total, I find that the ones with the long green leaves, no matter which species they are, they settle in very quickly and are more vigorous. I will hope to see some blooms now coming in 2024, and in order not to miss that happening, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel. It is greatly appreciated. The support goes a long, long way. There's one thing that I do have on my patio, though. The majority of my Rapiculous Lelias live outdoors in my climate all year round, but I do find some little kind of chewings going on at the growing points of all the new growths. You can see that here as well. Now, luckily, it isn't being chewed all the way down to where the growth stops growing, but it is something I am concerned about, and I cannot exactly tell you what it is. I know that these little ones they do produce a little bit of happy sap, and it is possible that ants are coming in and getting those little juices, and with their little chewy mouths, they may be damaging the tender tips. However, at least they are growing. Considering what these orchids have to endure out in nature, in cultivation, they are living la vida. It's five-star treatment, I can assure you. The reason I don't need to miss this one today is because in this pot there is Akadama, which is highly water retentive. So during the winter, I only missed her every two, every three days, and very carefully with some fertilizer, because they really don't need much, and I want to avoid salt buildup as you can see happening in the corner right there and the only reason I'm fertilizing this one is well we've got some growths and I hope to encourage them to get nice and big and bloom moving on to letter C this is my Catlia Kolnagoi. <laughs> While we saw her last in a video about spikes and blooms, things to look forward to, she was in spike. You can now see she's still in spike and we're waiting for a bud to open. This would be her first time blooming. So this is a quick progress report, an update on her and how she's doing. I still have the spike. I cannot tell you how nervous I am about this orchid. Every time I look at her, I want to make sure the spike is still there and nothing came long and chewed it. So she's extremely protected away from my elbows. Hopefully any birdies using that spike as a perch and snapping it, as well as any critters coming to munch. Fingers crossed she's going to bloom. <laughs> Sticking with the letter C, can you believe it? This is my crispy labia, a first time bloomer, and she is still in bloom. Isn't that insane? It's been two months now. 
Not many orchids, like in Rapiculus lelia fashion, have such long-lasting blooms. I am super pleased. It's her first time blooming, and she's doing this and for so long. I am seeing some wrinkling on her older leaves. So all I'm doing right now is just misting with plain RO water. No fertilizer because, well, we've got the blooming stage. She's probably going to take a little bit of a rest as we move into warmer temperatures and she doesn't really need any fertilizer at that moment. So what I'm giving her with the RO water is also flushing her pot out of any excess salts that may be in there. But isn't that amazing? Oh, love it. <laughs> Sticking with the principle of alphabetical order, this is Lelia Diana. Now, not a Rapiculus Lelia, but I have her in the same setup, semi-hydroponics with rocks and Akadama in the nether regions of the pot. Lelia Diana did bloom for us twice already, but she skipped 2023. What she did instead was grow two new growths. You can see what I'm trying to achieve here. Her growing direction was coming into the pot this way and starting to be a little bit dangerous and close to the edge of the pot. So with light training, check this out. We are doing a beautiful curve and we are continuing on with that curve, loving that this is working. But remember I mentioned chewing and things like that happening despite the fact that she is indoors during the winter. Again, a very happy sap producer. She is very generous on that front. And as this leaf was growing throughout the winter, a creature came and chewed this part of the leaf. It's actually see-through. I hope not to lose it at some point. But same here, you can see the growing tip has also been compromised. I'm a little bit wary of all the spotting here. Could be anthocyanin. This definitely is anthocyanin, but she's not in that high light of an area, but she does have to tolerate cold temperatures, which is probably affecting her a little bit. And this is a stress signal, possibly, that she is not happy with the low temperatures. Hopefully that will cancel itself out as temperatures warm up. And maybe with the next growth, the one that is supposed to grow in a timely manner, because this growth was growing throughout the winter, I hope the next growth will give us a bloom from her, which is darling because it opens up and it looks like a tulip for the longest time. Very, very sweet little bloom. I would love to see it again, but I'm glad that Diana is still in the collection. Here comes the first of my little concerned Rapiculus Lelias that was growing very, very well for me. Huh, you see this? This is Lelia Itambana. The section I'm extremely concerned about is this section in the back here. It was losing leaves left, right and center very, very quickly. It does have a mature little new growing point and an attempt at root growth, as you can see right there. The other section is doing just absolutely fine. I think I'm just going to give a little trickle of water down the center here in the hopes that I can support those roots. So I cannot tell you why this little back bit is protesting, what the issue is there. All I can say is, of course, I try to move this orchid as little as possible so that no more stress is induced and I can also save this part. Even though this part is doing very well, I would rather not lose that. So a little bit of a, why are you doing this? A learning curve, something new to get into my brain. What I see is enough to stress me out already. <laughs> this is Ketiana, was a first time bloomer as well in 2022, skipped 2023. I see a theme here. Maybe there are some Rapiculus Lelias that only bloom every two years, who knows? Who cares? Not me, to be honest. She's doing fabulously, even though she skipped 2023. I do not see any signs of new growths appearing just yet, so she may also skip 2024 blooming. We'll have to wait and see what she does next, but when she starts new growths, she does so with a vengeance. <laughs> they grow pretty fast, but yeah, my little Ketiana is doing well. So this is my struggling long geeps crossed with millery orchid. I had a little bit of a tour video where I said I'm going to keep her outside for the winter. I have confidence in her. blah de blah de blah I changed my mind. I pulled her from the outdoors into the warmer indoors. Because you can see she is stressed out like there's no tomorrow. And I hope the no tomorrow doesn't apply to her. But what I just discovered by looking at her now and that is how little I pull her from her space indoors because I don't want to move her. This lead that has me concerned 
is growing a new growth and I hope you can see that. Oh, that is very exciting. I only just saw that because you can see that one side is totally stressed out, just like with the Itambana. And one growth didn't make it, which is a shame. And this one was growing at the same time as this one that did make it. And I'm sincerely, seriously hoping that it is going to produce some much needed roots for us. So this is what I've been doing to her every second day. Just slight misting right there. No more because I do not need anything to rot out at this side. And now even more so, I don't need that to rot out either. This orchid was a gift from Michael McCarthy and Larry Jones. And well, gifted orchids are like, oh, <laughs> please live. And you know why she was a gift for me? Because let me show you the next one. It was so hard for me to find a Lelia Millery. When I finally found a Lelia Millery, she came in an extremely pathetic, sad, very weak state. Look at her now. So the doubts of me being able to pull this orchid through and get it to survive were so, so high. The odds were against us because while she was in that poorly state, she also was attacked by thrips, as you can see by that leaf. So Michael McCarthy and Larry Jones pulled together and bought me the Longib crossed with Millery just so that I have something Millery in my collection. So sweet, so grateful, that's why she needs to live. But look at my Millery now, not to take away from the Longib crossed with Millery. I want that orchid to survive, but check this development out. From an orchid that looked like it was going to head to the bin, from an orchid that had a thrips attack when it needed it the least, <laughs> to now having a wonderful new growth. Yes, the leaf is a bit curled. That's just a weakness signal. But look at the next new growth. I don't think it looks that weak at all. And I'm just going to do a little tug test. She feels nicely rooted in. I'm just doing a gentle tug because I'm not going to get ahead of myself. But this is looking so promising. So what we need to do is get both of them to thrive. And my hopes are that the 2024 season is going to be the season of recovery for my long deep cross with Millery. And this, yes, cartwheels around the patio. <laughs> Okay, we're going to zip back to the letter L. Seeing as we went with Longeep crossed with Millery, I went to the M because Millery was one of the reasons why I've got the other one. All of that. Anyway, back to the letter L and let's just take a deep breath of this gorgeous vanilla sweet fragrance with a hint of sugar of my Lelia Lundii. What else is there to say? But she is doing fabulously in her semi-hydro bowl. So well, in fact, I had eight blooms, one of which has already faded, but we're still enjoying seven blooms. They're lasting an incredible amount of time as well, longer than they were in the pot that she was before. Now you can see her older growths were going all in that direction because her light source was on this side. And upon her repot, I thought, yeah, no, what we're going to do is balance the look a little bit out. And now you can see all the blooms pointing in this direction, now our direction, because I have her facing to where the light source is right here. And with that, all the new growths are coming in our direction in the hopes that I can keep this orchid in this bowl for a little bit longer, despite her creeping rhizome habit. <laughs> And the thing is, she cannot live outdoors in my climate. Otherwise, I would be so tempted to mount her, but that is impossible. The size of her mount would have to be quite large. And on top of that, it would end up being rather heavy. So I'm really pleased that this is working out great. Now, we're coming to the end of this update and we are at the letter R. This is my current status quo of my Lelia Regina. That had to be, yeah, split in the rhizome because of pseudobulbs rotting, because the summer of 2023 was super high in humidity, out of the norm high humidity for my climate, which usually averages 30%. And all my Rapiculus Lelias have either the wicking material of Akadama or Ceramis in them. And with extreme high humidity, yikes, I can tell you that it wasn't doing any good for my Regina at all. So a very delicate repot ensued. And we have two pieces in the pot right now. You can see that one of the pseudobulbs that were green at the time has now shriveled and moved on. Thank you for your service. 
and I've been losing leaves on these two. This one was green when we potted it up and this one was, well, doing much better as well when we potted it up. However, all these structures failing is to support the front. And these two growths, at least they've matured. They are trying new roots, which I will try and keep going and cultivating and growing. And thankfully, thankfully, this piece right here, despite the concern I've got for the yellowing of the second bulb right here, yeah, I'm not entirely happy with that. The only thing I can say is she is now in a much less water retentive media. It's only lava rock. It is a semi-hydro setup. I can't steer away from that because what if my climate goes back to my 30% average humidity? Then I'm in trouble when it comes to keeping these happy and watered. Anyway, it's a bit of a dance right now for my Regina and I. I really hope we make a great pairing in this dance of ours, that our teamwork makes us successful in the end. Let me move on to the last orchid, which is not a Rapiculus Lelia. Luckily, she comes last because of the alphabet, because this orchid we will probably not see anymore as doubles. I'm gonna explain. This is what's left of my Cattleya Schilleriana. As mentioned, not a Rapiculus Lelia, but Orchid Ninja Troy Boy Sun also has her in the collection. And well, mine was diagnosed with Fusarium late 2023. This is what's left of the bigger piece. And this is what the second piece was when I took her out of the pot. Whew. I don't think we're gonna be seeing the bigger piece anymore in my collection. I've been trying to tide her over and what I'm doing with the little piece over here that was in the same pot is every two or three days I just miss the roots. I'm doing this on a wet, dry cycle kind of culture. I am not concerned for the time being about the leaves. They don't look shriveled to me at all. The roots are not hydrating, but at least they're getting some moisture every once in a while. And if this piece pulls through, it's going to be a miracle because the two were in the same pot. The one on the left had clear fusarium. So yeah, roots touching each other, water sharing and all that fun stuff. If my little one collapses, then Shilleriana is no more on the patio and it would be a great shame. However, she is still looking okay, so I live in hope. And you know what? I would appreciate it if you would like this video, even though I hate ending it on like a negative note, you know? Oh, my Cattleya Shilleriana is a goner, sort of ish, kind of like she's still around. But please, I would really appreciate it if you would like this video. Thank you so, so much to Orchid Ninja Troy Boy Sun for making this video actually happen. Part one is linked in the description if you want to go back and have a look at that. Meanwhile, I do hope that you enjoyed this form format of a little update on a group of orchids we haven't seen for a while and not just randomly picked by moi but for a reason. If you want to become an Orchid Ninja check out the join button. Orchid Ninjas is what we call our members. I've also done an upgrade on a category called Samurai because why not we are all in this together. So become an Orchid Ninja it really helps out supporting the orchids for all their needs and eventually yeah something will trickle down to me but the orchids come first i thank you for the support i thank you so much for watching i wish you a beautiful day on the condition though please that you stay safe take care bye